Hello! Now, uh, my brother Bilo, the Guru Mafinda, is uh, back once again down at the plots and he's been uh, scrubbing pots, cleaning and disinfecting water trays, things like that, all in preparation for uh, the potting on of tomatoes and cucumbers and things like that. So as the plant grows, obviously the little seedling then expands his root system and he wants to carry on doing that. So before you plant it out, there's one, maybe two pottings on from the seedling stage. And that's what we're going to be doing. This is the preparation for that. So it's cleaning all the um, utensils, if you like, all the, all the sort of plastic uh, that you're going to be using. The watering trays the three and a half inch pots that we're going to be potting the, the seedlings into. But also, because we were running out of, um, of, of sort of potting on space, the Guru has created a, a kind of a little dance floor uh, for the watering up trays and all the rest of it uh, to live on during this um, juvenile stage of their development. And it's been strengthened tonight as well, so it's all in preparation creating the space, making sure you've got the utensils and the, and the pots to put the stuff in so that you can just crack on with your little project and uh, there won't be any uh, restrictions or dramas. Obviously as the plant grows, the, uh, the little house for it to grow in needs to grow with it. So that's what he's doing today. He's a bit subdued at the beginning because it's been freezing today and overcast and uh, the Guru's had four weeks of nothing but sunshine and happiness. So uh, you'll have to bear with him. The end result's worth it. Okay, see you later boys and boys and girls and I hope you're uh, having as much fun on the channel as we are. If you are, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe if you're not a subscriber and um, if you haven't hit the notification bell icon, please do so that, so, so that you don't miss another episode of The Little Farmer's Farm. We hope you'll pick up a lot of top tips about organic growing and the easy ways and simple methods that we can use to do that. Okay, we heartily encourage everybody to get into a little bit of growing of your own fresh organic fruit and vegetables. So let's crack on and I'll see you again at the end. We've got three more watering trays there, but they do need to be washed and disinfected. The weather's turned today. We're in for a bit of a cold snap. This is uh, this is what Mother Nature does to you. You see, she lures you, lures you into a false sense of security. Because for the last two or three weeks, it's been uh, it's been a scorcher, it's been really hot and sunny. But we are still in spring, early spring really, well early to mid spring now isn't it, and there's always a good chance that we, uh, we're going to get frosts going forwards, right up until probably the end of, um, end of May, mid to end of May. I think it was this time last year we got the beast from the east, the second wave of the beast from the east which was an icy cold. Um, wind that came down and we got snow around this time of year mid-April anyway we're going to clean those and disinfect them I'll just put the, put the kettle on of course with our super solar setup we, uh, we're alright can brew I just need more storage space in those batteries We'll crack on. So all of those little pots have been washed up. And they're ready to receive. Ready to receive. As have the uh, three watering up trays. And uh, I'm just strengthening up, strengthening up the bench as well there for them. So I managed to get to here without having to go and scrounge some more wood. So I've had a mooch about, found some more wood, uh, three by two, which I've put on the undersides of the uh, bench top just to support the panels on the top, uh, the boards on the top. And I need to do this bit now. Those two will do for 
the underside of the panelling but I need a prop and I've run out of that kind of wood so hang on I've got a pallet I've got a pallet I'm sure I've got another pallet I knew I had a pallet now fingers crossed let's measure these oh go on let's see about 30 inch yeah 30 inch Fingers crossed. So I've dug down about four inches there, just to, uh, I mean the stone, the stone's going to be going underneath there as well, and then I'm going to pound it down, but we just need to make sure that that, uh, that distance is, you know, at least 30 inches really. Let's see, there's 30 inches. 30 inches to that. You little bloody ripper. That's going to be perfect, yeah. that's going to be a perfect uh, drop. It's like I always say, God loves the grower, he is the husband and steward of his lands. Jammy get. Right, let's get it in. I'll bang it off with an, with, with an hammer first, there's an hammer, we'll use that one. Now that to me looks alright by eye. So, uh, I'll just check it. Right, so that's saying it wants to go a little bit, a little bit that way. So if I knock it across a smidgen, what do you need a smidgen? Perhaps a little smidgen more. Fraction. Perfect Amando. Right. Now we just have to check it because I think it's higher at the top than it is down there. So it will need pounding in. Yeah, it will. Probably about a half inch. So leave me with that and I'll do that now. I think you can give me that, can't you? Practically bang on. A man on a flying horse wouldn't be able to tell the difference there, so we're having that. So we need a piece of wood to run from, uh, from over there to where it meets the, uh, the upright timber. And for that, it's dead easy because all you need to do is Get your bit of wood that's a little bit longer, put it in underneath. How to do with one hand this? Like that. Making sure it's uh, even all the way across. And then on the reverse side of that, sorry, let's get that right. On the reverse side, under the, we're using that. You get into the elbow of that and make your mark down the wood. So on the reverse side of this, the pen goes round the back into the corner, draws down on that wood you presented up, presented up there, and make your mark. Now you always favour if that's the piece. Sorry, if this is the piece that you want to fit in, where you've made your fat line there, which I have with that sharpie favour the outside so it's a, it's a snug fit makes things a lot easier when you're on your own if it's a snug fit and then we'll do the same thing on this side same thing on that side okay and if I shove that up and meet underneath but I can then let, let it rest and it won't drop while I put me um, a sort of pre counter sink the holes where the screws are going to be and all I do with that and my old joinery teacher will tell me off with this I know we're we still going he's just um... it fell then did you see oh 
so they're kind of getting a start for your screws really and I'll put all of the screws in just tap them in and uh, not all the way through just to get them get them in <coughs> put that piece that just that's just dropped underneath and then we can screw to that then screw to that yeah so they're all ready for bazzing in now they're all lined up and ready so when I put the bit of timber underneath here I'm going to uh, put the middle screw in first just to get it uh, seated in then hold it and put the rest in show you I thought I filmed that bit then anyway they're all in now now you might think well it's not it's still not completely sturdy that is it <coughs> but we're going to send a screw up from underneath into that timber there and I'm going to be putting a, uh, a screw there into it and another one from the back face going at 45 degrees into that and then it'll be uh, rock steady rock steady just that last one to go in now boys and girls that's a 70 mil one one hand down get in That's going to be sturdy and solid as a rock. Beautiful. Just checking again, they're still flat and level. So that's really sturdy now. Uh, not that it's going to take this weight, it doesn't need to, but it's got 14 stones sat on it now. And uh, it's still keeping its, um, its level, its flat level sturdiness. sturdiness. There you go. It's bang, bang on. So yeah, Tony's back. That was the guru. Uh, cut short a little bit at the end there because we had a corruption on his uh, on his closing comments. But you can see there from from what he's been doing down at the plots that uh, we're all ready for rocking and rolling there now. And tomorrow we're going to be doing that. Just that thing. We've got three different types of tomatoes that have been grown in seed trays. And they're going to be separated from their brothers and sisters and put on into pots. So we're going to be creating um, fresh bedded plants within their little pots. But about 16 uh, for, the, for the tomatoes. So uh, as I say, yeah, the three varieties that the potting on will be getting potted on tomorrow. And we'll talk you through that. We're going to be using a, a good mix of um, vermiculite and, 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 and compost, clover compost. And because the tomatoes are going to mix in an ever so slight amount of uh, bone meal, but you'll see all that tomorrow. All right. I'm Guru Mafinder's brother, Tony. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. And uh, remember, we love you all and keep growing with your heads down. Bye now. Ta-da.